This is the sixth video and first of the modelling. We're now going to introduce some heating systems which have first order dynamics. We're building on the videos, early videos, which looked at mechanical, electrical and fluid systems and demonstrated that many simple systems um, from those scenarios can be represented by first order ordinary differential equations. This video is going to look at heating systems which comprise a simple storage device and some energy flow and show that they too can have analogous models and behaviours. So first then, let's look at some of the components we might need to know. It's well known that if you heat something up, it stores energy and the amount of energy stored is considered as linear in temperature. So if we imagine that the energy stored is denoted by capital Q and we let the temperature be capital T and the component we're interested in has thermal capacitance C, then we can write this equation here. The energy stored Q is C times T. Now a key point to note is in practice it does not matter whether temperature is measured on an absolute or relative scale. And so we're not going to worry too much about whether T is Fahrenheit, Celsius, Celsius Kelvin or something else. Um, the models still work. As with earlier videos, we're also not going to give precise units. Although units are important, and you'll see we've put that at the bottom here, we don't want to confuse the key messages of these videos, which are looking at analogous behaviours and models, by being too pedantic about units. And that's something you can study separately. What about energy flow? Well, you will remember if you've looked at the previous videos um, on models with constant relationships that we looked at energy flow times conductors. And what we said is if you had temperature T1 at one end of a conductor, temperature T2 at the other end of a conductor, then you could represent the flow rate of energy uh, down this conductor by the equation T1 minus T2 is some constant Kh times the flow rate W. And this is good enough for the sorts of insights and analogies we want to deliver, um, develop in these videos. If you want to be a, a, a lot more involved and more advanced, then you will have to go to uh, more advanced textbooks and sources. Let's put these two things together. Now, this schematic is a bit messy. And what it's meant to represent, if um, we can look at it another way, is you have a block here some form of component which is at a temperature T2 and this is insulated from the environment so I could put um, some diagram here okay so imagine that blue is insulation from the environment and the environment is at temperature T1 so what you've got is you've got energy flow that goes from the environment through this insulation in <coughs> to your component and so we've represented that using this schematic where you can see this block here, which represents the energy flow from the environment at T1 into the block at T2. And we're representing the component as this simple sort of cupoid block. All right, what sort of equations are we going to need? I'll just um, rub those bits out. All right, what sort of equations are we going to need? Well, the energy storage, we've said, is going to be the capacitance times the temperature. Oh, sorry, that's um, disappeared. The capacitance times the temperature, Q equals C times T2. The energy flow through this insulation or down this conductor is given here. Kh dQ dt equals T1 minus T2. Now, if I rearrange those two into a more standard form, you get this equation down here at the bottom. CKh times the rate of change of temperature 2 with time, that's the temperature of your big block, plus T2 equals T1. And what do you notice? It's a simple first order differential equation, exactly as we've seen in many of the other systems. So what are the analogies? Well, we can very easily build an analogy between the voltage supply for an electrical circuit and the external temperature for this thermal system. The energy stored in the thermal system Q is actually analogous to the charge, perhaps in a capacitor. The thermal capacitance, therefore, is analogous to the electrical capacitance, and the insulation, which prevents flow from outside the system into the system, is actually analogous to a resistor, because a resistor 
prevents current flow. It needs a voltage difference to drive current, while the insulation needs a temperature difference to drive energy through it. If we look at the models, you'll see what we've got here for the thermal system. We've got the rate of change of temperature with time of the thermal system and what is the component which is multiplying that is component which is linked to the thermal resistance the insulation okay or conductivity what stops flow of energy multiplies this derivative you've got something which depends upon the capacitance of the block and you've got your right hand side which is your external temperature if we look at the resistor capacitor circuit what do you notice the resistance to flow of current goes in the same place as the resistance to flow of energy. The capacitance goes in the same place as the capacitance. And obviously the external temperature, T1, goes in the same place as the voltage. So we've got analogous positions for the different components and signals. So a summary of the four analogies we've looked at in these videos. We have a resistor capacitor at the bottom. What have you got? You've got a first order differential equation with resistance multiplying the derivative, capacitance multiplying the state, voltage on the right hand side. You've got a spring damper where you've got your damping multiplying the derivative, your spring multiplying the state, force on the right hand side. Your thermal system, you've got an equivalent resistance to flow Kh times the rate of change of temperature, your capacitance term times the state temperature, and your driving thing is now the external temperature. And we had our tank system, where we had resistance to flow based on Kp1, um, and we had pressure as our driving thing, and the capacitance was linked to the density of the fluid and gravity, because that has to match P in. So, Lots of systems have got analogous components, analogous models, and analogous behaviours. So if you're really struggling with the electrical and the mechanical systems, maybe you'll get the fluid system. And if you can get your head around the fluid system, you might understand the others. Alternatively, you might get the heating system. You might be able to relate to that. What's it like standing outside in a cold day or a hot day? And how does it vary as you put on more or less clothes? Let's just do one other thing for completeness. What happens if I add some heating into a thermal system? So you'll see I've got the same scenario here. I've got my item, uh, my block. There's the block here. Um, I've got some form of insulation, which I've schematically represented by this block here. So I've got an external temperature T1, an internal temperature T2. So heat is flowing from the environment into the block or vice versa. But I'm now saying I'm going to heat up the block as well with a heating rate W. What sort of model will I get? Well, here's the equations. The rate of change of energy stored in the block is going to be C times dT2 d time. So T2 is the temperature of this block. C is its thermal capacitance. I've got some energy coming from the environment. There it is. T1 minus T2 of a kH, so that's how quickly energy flows from outside into the block. And I'm also going to add the direct heating from W. If I rearrange this into a standard first order differential equation, the key point to note is you've got two separate input signals. You've got an input due to the external temperature, and you've got an input due to the heating. And that looks just a little bit different from the systems we've done before. But just to get you to think, I'm not going to do it here, you will probably find that this W is equivalent to a current source. Okay, so if you do an electrical circuit, you'll probably find that putting W straight onto that block is a bit like having a current source going straight into a capacitor. So a different form of electrical circuit. So a summary, we've illustrated the model derivation for simple thermal systems with two different types of input, an external temperature or direct heating. And what we've shown is if you want a simple analogy with series resistor capacitor systems, actually you need to use this external temperature as the main driving point. Okay. Um, now some other videos are going to focus on how you interpret all these first order models and look at how changing the parameters impacts 
on behavior. So if you're interested now in saying, okay, I've got all these models, what can I say about how these systems behave? How can I make my resistor capacitor system have the same sort of time constants and behaviors and steady state as my spring damper system? Well, you need to go and look at the videos on first order behaviors.